rebirth, not of this world. John 18.36 Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. King James Version We make gods of men and expect miracles from them. We make saints of sinners and wonder why we wander from the path. It is enough to focus on the goals and needs at hand, and it is sufficient to deal with the issues of the day. Evil is a distraction that diverts you from a necessary path. See where things should not be and know where they need to be. It is not too late to right wrongs, for his kingdom is not of this world. Each man must administer to those around him, give a hand and reach out with the news. For each man serves his flock and tends to them, for that is his right and his way. It is a godly way. For if a man have no flock to tend to, then he has none to administer to. And man must protect his flock, as there are wolves in the foothills who would have his to be their own. This is protection of the body, the mind, and the soul. Be wise and be kind. For the unwise are unkind. Be polite, for this is the path to dialogue and the resolution of issue. Least said, soonest mended, is just like to leave the flock unattended. Words that encourage will endure, as will words that cause hurt or harm. One must choose each path carefully. For where we tread, we leave footprints and others may follow. The appearance of a well-worn path appears as an open invitation. Be as disciplined as a disciple. Purchase with prudence. When you need to act, first check the fact. When necessary, sell your clothes by a sword. For a man well armed can protect his flock, his home, and his loved ones. History is full of peoples who beat drums and raise standards and marched with swords in their hands. They were hungry for war. But beat your swords into plowshares, and you shall have food aplenty. Show no less love for the world than what your Lord has shown to you. Let the freshness of the light of each new day wash through your spirit and lead you to lead others. Be diligent, be kind, be careful. More is not always the answer, for enough is enough. And less is not always the answer, 
for often we still have more that we can give. God knows what the heart desires and how the fascinations of this world will distract us with wonder and promise and compromise. To tell the truth to yourself is the battle. The battlefield is within the mind. A man's lips do contend for strokes. Remember the scriptures and the Lord's words, and he shall do your bidding. For the Lord shall fight for you as you shall hold your peace. The Lord will stand for you as evil rises against you, and he will give you the courage to stand. He will give you the strength to fight, and he will give you the peace to hold. Man's weakness is his unfaithfulness to the Lord, to himself, and to others. True faith is a deep reverence. It is knowing what is unknown and listening with regard. To judge is to do justice. To study is to show appreciation. And to act is to show faith. To let the Spirit of the Lord into your heart is to trust his judgment above your own. For man is clouded in judgment, blinded by what he sees and deafened by what he hears. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. We are the profane masters of our own contrarianism. There are no idle words and no idle acts. For each action and utterance we must give account. For if we bite one another, we may be consumed by one another. As if we love one another, we may be loved by one another. So our confessions may lead to forgiveness, that we may be clean and born again into righteousness with our new identity. We must get out of our own way and give way to God. This is the challenge. The adversity within ourselves is far more easy to control than the adversity in others, but far more difficult to manage. We must give in. For only then can God wipe away all of the tears from our eyes. Only then will our sorrow be reduced and our suffering be released. All things of the flesh shall pass away. Through our own words we deliver our truths, but through God's words we deliver God's messages. This is the way it must be, for none of the scripture is to be grounded in private interpretation. It is simply to be learned and understood, which is, of course, not simple at all, but a lifelong task, for interpretation is different from understanding, and knowledge is not wisdom. That we will be troubled by things of this world is true, that we shall be diverted by devils and deceived by men, I am sure that we shall have issues is certain, but there is a path where the sorrow and misfortune is carried by another so that we may live. One whose domain and dominion is not subject to the rules of man or the laws of the land. One whose gratitude and justice and peace may be everlasting. One who calls to himself all the people who have labored. In life's grand adventure, 
there is a place beyond the physical. There is a space beyond the mental. There is a spiritual realm. It is neither tangible nor temporal. It is the way through Christ to a place of salvation, a place of enlightenment and a place of discernment, a place of encouragement and a place of courage. It is where we find fellowship and liberty. It is a broad way open to all that leads to a narrow gate, a gate of promise, a gate of redemption. There is a kingdom beyond this world, a place where faith matters, a place where you can rest with peace, a place where your burdens are shouldered by another. It is a place that you can find wherever you are. So know the kindness of the King. Live forever in his heart and seek salvation through Christ. Let us pray. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen.